Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us for Nerd Wisdom, Episode 5. As always, I'm your host, Zach, the Nerdy Wise Guy. With me, as always... Movie Master Jay. How you guys doing? All right. So, you missed us last week because we have lives and I'm busy. <laughs> so, that's why you haven't gotten a podcast. Because we have lives? Because we have lives. Because <laughs> I'm busy as hell right now. It's so damn busy. It's unbelievable. So, a lot has happened. A lot, a lot has happened. So I'm going to do my best to keep this confined to an hour. But if it's not, just be prepared. You may have to pause this and do what you need and then come back and enjoy even more amazing nerd wisdom. So to start, uh, I'll let you pick. So we can either go go DC or Marvel. Let's go... Marvel's we, we, a big we one. Usually, no, we Marvel usually, do, we usually do DC first because you're a DC nut. So let's go Marvel. Okay, okay. So, as always, we'll start our Marvel Movie Madness news. Marvel Movie Madness! Okay, so I guess we'll start with some of the smaller stuff. Because there's a big-ass one that I want to cover. So, there's been some recent talk that uh, Terry Crews wanted to be Luke Cage. Mm -hmm. And he he was like, oh, man, I really wanted to be Luke Cage. You know, I had a lot of interest to do that. Yeah, but his buddy uh, Michael K- Michael Coulter, Mike Coulter was the one that picked to be Luke Cage, aka Power Man, in the Jessica Jones series. Now I'll be honest, I have no idea who Mike Coulter is. I do. I have. I know who Mike Coulter is. Mike Coulter, he's actually been in Million Dollar Baby. He was the boxer, the very first boxer that Clint Eastwood was training. He was also in a couple episodes of The Following. He was the uh, FBI director or an FBI lead lead agent. And, or I think they called him the ASAC at that time. And he was also in Men in Black 3. So I can understand if you didn't watch Men in Black 3. He played uh, Agent J's dad. So. Oh, okay. Oh, now you recognize him, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, he's had such a versatile career. It's just so oh, hard yeah. to narrow him down. But now that I know that he <laughs> is a, you know, Agent J's dad, you know, I'm totally sold on the guy. <laughs> Rest in peace. <laughs> so, uh, for those of you who don't know who Luke Cage is, to kind of give you just some very limited backstory, because he, I'll be honest, he's, I don't know much about him. He is not what you would say is the more popular one. This is the reason no, he's why. he's not a very prominent, he, he's like a Hawkeye. You know, you know no, because even Hawkeye is in the Avengers movie. Luke Cage is... He was basically what Iron Man was prior to the movies. He's just, for whatever reason, they have decided not to give him his own movie. They just feel like he uh, he doesn't have his own movie. Um, but one of the things is, is that, you know, with Luke Cage, his, his AKA, he's called the Power Man. So basically, to kind of list off some of his, uh, invo- his abilities, he's got superhuman strength, stamina, endurance, durability, his mm-hmm. unbreakable skin, and he's highly impervious to damage and temperature, accelerated healing, and he's a good street fighter, good hand to hand combat. So he's basically kind of similar to Superman except he's really just got the strength. Yeah, he doesn't fly. And invulnerability though. No, he doesn't have strength. He doesn't fly. Um he was essentially like a character, I think, honestly. He he started out around let's see, he first appeared in the seventies, so yeah. it's kinda of during that whole To me he sounds like a black a black version of the thing. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. He's the thing without being the rock. I mean he was <laughs> He, he was a character that I, was created to bring in black audiences. You know, in that time, during mm-hmm. the 70s, that was kind of the whole era where, you know, it was, you know, you're trying to be hip, trying to be cool, and you're trying to bring in that kind of, that audience that's kind of untouched because, let's be honest. You gotta honest, bring in the brothers. You gotta have that type of, you gotta have that, that feel to it. You gotta bring in all genres. Exactly, because let's be honest, the comic book world as a whole is predominantly white and very male. True. So there are very limited selections of people in there. So he's going to be starring in a Netflix series. He's going to be in something called The Defenders, uh, as well as something called AKA Jessica Jones. And then I believe he's getting his own show as well. Hmm. Um, so it's it's some pretty interesting stuff. He's going to be uh, he's going to be in there. You know, it's obviously going to be on Netflix. This is coming alongside, which we're really getting right back into uh, Daredevil. Daredevil. So big talk. You know the. 
the AKA Jessica Jones and the mm-hmm. Luke Cage and Iron Fist and the Defenders, that's been all really big. The big news, though, when they announced this was Daredevil. Mm-hmm. So how do you feel about Daredevil coming back to Netflix? Or coming to Netflix? I was supposed to say coming to Netflix. And coming back. I mean, uh, you know what? Uh, I'm happy to see them reboot Daredevil just because the movie did not do well. And I'm just going to leave it at that because I'll get on my soapbox and start talking so much trash. So I'm not going to go there. But I'm happy to see them bringing it back. I'm happy to see them rebooting it and giving it a a good origin story. Mm -hmm. You know, this is going to be on the lines of Arrow, which was which you turned me on to, which I'm very happy you did because I have enjoyed the series and I'm actually ahead of you in the series now. So, ha. Um, (laughs) But no, I'm very happy to see them bring Daredevil because Daredevil was one of my favorite characters. I just enjoyed what he was. You know, I know he he and Spider-Man work in the same area, in the same realm, in the same world. But okay, yeah, like I was saying, you know, he's he and Spider-Man work in the same world. And to me, he's kind of like he's almost like a Marvel's version of a Batman for me. That's what he is to me because he kind of honed his body. He kind of learned, you know, certain things about athletics and fighting to make himself a crime fighter. You know what I mean? So to me, that's what Daredevil is like. And that's why I enjoy him. I'm looking forward to the series. So we'll, we will see how it is. But how do you feel about it? You know, the thing about Daredevil, I, the one of the things I like most about Daredevil, Daredevil is not, he's not the character where you read and you're getting these epic kind of like fights and you're not getting these epic um you know world saving events kind of deal you know daredevil is a lot more down to earth you know he he goes into hell's kitchen and Mm -hmm. that's his area he doesn't really dive outside of that he just kind of sticks within hell's kitchen you know maybe occasionally he might go into somewhere else in that realm but Mm -hmm. he stays relatively within hell's kitchen and you know, you say he's a lot like, he, you feel like he's more like Batman. To me, he's kind of, if I had to pick a DC counterpart that really, to me, matches, I, I would have to pick Nightwing. You know, and even mm-hmm. Nightwing, I feel like he's, he, he is in another level than Daredevil, but they suit very differently. You know, Nightwing's the type of character, you know, he was uh, Batman's former protege, you know, mm-hmm. took it upon himself to become his own mantle. Then he jumps into Bloodhaven, and he bec- he calls that, he claims that city as his own, and he takes care of that city as his own. So, that's the same thing with Daredevil. You know, Daredevil, because of his blindness and the way the radioactive chemicals made him blind uh-huh. he was able to get you know some type yeah. of like weird sonar it's kind of like a sonar yeah but he's also getting like enhanced agility enhanced strength and different things well, like that because of, of his senses sight, yeah his loss of sight helped to promote that the his touch and his feel was different from there on out yeah you know so I mean it, they always people say that all the time is when a person goes blind certain other um, senses tend to you know, tend to actually just, you know, they, they just become more active. So, right. but that's what they say. But, you know, I, I'm i looking forward to the series. You know, and uh, I don't know the guy that's playing him. His name's Charlie Cox. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know much of what he's been in, looking at what he's kind of been in, you know, in the last few few years. It's, you know, there have been a couple big name movies, you know, uh, we got Stardust there. Um, Stardust the, is not a good movie. <laughs> oh yeah, but it's a it's a movie. You know, it's got some. You got something there. Uh, you know, you got uh, the theory of everything. He's been in uh, downtown downtown Abbey. Downtown Abbey. No, because there's a oh, there's no W. It's downtown Abbey. Downtown Abbey. They're like some weird British thing. Okay, they say things weird. Um, but it's supposed to be downtown Abbey. Right? Yeah, downtown Abbey basically. <laughs> Uh, he was in Boardwalk Empire. It seems to be the biggest credit that I think he might have. You know, he's obviously done some state. He has done some stage work. But you know, the thing I like about about what I've seen because he has a teaser, uh, and if you haven't watched it, I would highly recommend watching it. It looks amazing. You know, he's got that whole thing, and he's he's got a lot of the same kind of similarities that you've seen in uh, in the comics because one of the things mm-hmm. is he doesn't initially start out wearing that red outfit no in the he comics. starts off kind of like 
what Arrow did. I mean, kind of what Arrow did, what The Flash has done. Yeah. You know, what those two series have done. They, they've made him, you know, he, he doesn't have a mask. He just basically has, uh, you know, um, kind of like almost looking like a... <laughs> Like a winter mask over his face. Well, it looks like know. a pirate that, <laughs> that doesn't know any better. Like a Vato pirate, kind of. Like he has to like pull it over his eyes or something along those lines, you know? So, um, I th- I'm really excited for the Daredevil thing. I, I feel like mm-hmm. it It definitely, this, this is Marvel's arrow. This is what allows them to kind of get into T... Te- a bigger realm of TV because while mm-hmm. Agents of Shield and Agent Carter are mm-hmm. you know getting up there you know they don't have the kind of just this just amazing backing like everyone loves Arrow like this show is just getting tons and tons of praise and mm-hmm. within good reason because it is a it really is a good, good show it is a really good show like um, I said I'm happy you turned me on to it because I had just not watched it I'm like I want to watch the show and I haven't watched it. I don't know what was wrong with me. And then you told me to watch it. I had to watch it, and I'm glad I started watching it. This is why you listen to Nerdy Wide Guy and take his wisdom, because I, I know better. Um, <laughs> anyway. But yeah, I mean, it, it's just one of those things where uh, I really feel like, you know, the Netflix is a good place. Uh, it, I'm personally a binge watcher. You know, I'm, mm. as you know, behind on Arrow. I, Finish season two, and season two's on Netflix, so I can binge watch the rest of it, and it feels better. I don't like the cliffhangers and being able to just go into Netflix and watch a full hour episode. That's nice. Mm -hmm. But um, it also makes me wonder that, you know, if it gets bigger and bigger, you know, will Marvel be able to kind of maintain that momentum? Because people are going to want to see more of their heroes. You know, Mm -hmm. you know, is this where Blade makes a return? Is this how they get Ghost Rider to be interesting? Because... Be honest, he's not a very interesting character to start with, in my opinion. But you know, hey, yeah, that's something in your realm because I don't know who Ghost Rider is. You know, who Ghost Rider is he's Nick Cage in a really bad movie. Oh, I thought you said right writer, not writer. Ghost Writer. Uh, thought, funny anecdote: writer. there actually is a Ghost Writer as well. Yes, uh, that's like an old '90s, sh- just a really, really. I know the show. Yeah, you know, I, the show. I know the show so, Ghost Rider. Okay, so those I used to watch know. that show religiously on PBS. Did man. you really? Yes, I did watch Ghost Rider, okay? Was it, what was it called? It was called Ghost Rider. I know, but it was, um, wasn't there like... It was like a really dorky like dot, and that was yeah, supposed was to be like dot, the ghost. Hey, scroll back up. It's a little dot, and it had like... like Almost looked like eyebrows above it, and that was the Ghost Rider. Yeah, and yeah. it would like help these kids. It was yeah, like... It helped them solve like little Scooby mysteries. Doo, it was like Scooby-Doo. It was like Scooby... It was like live-action Scooby-Doo. That's exactly yeah, what it was. Yeah, and except, the, you know, except, you know, the dog or Shaggy accidentally coming across it. <laughs> oh, my God, I can't even watch this. It just No, please, so bad. we cannot was, watch it right now. Because it was man. so no. dorky because, like, it wasn't like the ghost was like, oh, <laughs> this guy's the one that, you know, poisoned no, the lunch lady. It would give them some type of little clue or a little mystery thing. Yeah, that and then it would, like, for. it would do, like, the old kid show thing where it would pause on it for a very long time time and you're like uh what's going on and then they're like i think it's a keyboard yeah so it's, yeah it, it, the funniest one i remember that's why that's why i'm like ghost rider i'm like are you talking about that show but ghost rider is rider rider yeah, okay the, 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 the motorcycle the really horrible bad nicholas cage movies yes. so i mean we can go on and on this show looks interesting you got a lot going on again you have uh you have uh, Vincent D'Onofrio as mm-hmm. the Kingpin, uh, Charlie Cox as Daredevil, and that those two alone will be interesting. Vincent D'Onofrio as Kingpin—that's an interesting pick. Why would that be? I mean, I think well, he'll do really good. Oh uh, no, no, no! I I like the pick. It's just interesting. I thought they would give more for the more bulky fat guy, but D'Onofrio—I think that's a good one. I think that's See, good. the thing is, is D'Onofrio is. Kind of like one of those transformation actors, because if you ever saw Vincent D'Onofrio... Oh, I've seen Vincent D'Onofrio, okay? You know, watching him What, did you, like, spend the night at a hotel with him? No, I've watched his movies. I've seen his movies, you know, but, you know, D'Onofrio is is a little different. He's... He can can roll into whatever character he really wants to. Yeah, I mean, he can get super ripped. He can get super chunky. Yeah. I mean, he he did Adventures of the Babysitter with... (laughs) And then that was right around the same time as he did uh, Full Metal Jacket. If you watch Full Metal Jacket, he's got a kind of he's chunky. He's got the gut and everything. 
And then you watch freaking Adventures of a Babysitter sitting He's there ripped. with this horribly long, glossy <laughs> hair, and he's kind of a jack dude. So I think the advantage is that he can be very deceivingly strong. That's the whole thing is the kingpin is supposed to be deceivingly strong. I could yeah. see that with the kingpin. And, you know, say what you will about law and order criminal intent. He has that kind of role where he can psychologically screw with you. Oh, I know he, he does. Has that you, I can't even remember the name of the movie. I think it was called The Cell, the one he had yeah, with, with, so. uh, with, J-Lo. Jen- with Jennifer Lopez. And he was just creepy in that, too. So, yeah, he was just creepy in general. Yeah, that movie was just weird. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I mean, again, Daredevil, very exciting. Um, more to come on the Daredevil thing. We will be mm-hmm. doing some some stuff with the Daredevil movie coming soon, so look forward to that. Uh, and Jay is going to pull out the little hairs that he has left on his head <laughs> after I suffer him through it. No, I'm so. just not going to pull them out. I just the rest. I'm just going to go completely gray, people. That's what's going to happen. It's not going to be that bad. Anyway, so moving on. So uh, first, before we move on to mm-hmm. news topics, because we all mm-hmm. know there is a glooming news story that we're going to have to cover here in a minute. Yeah. But I want to discuss first. So... Netflix is launching out some big characters and things like that. Mm-hmm. So Marvel still has control of most of their more popular properties. Uh, obviously, Fantastic Four, anything to do with X-Men and Silver Surfer are out. That's with Fox, which yeah. we'll cover later. Sony, Spider-Man, and that whole universe, we'll cover that later too. And then from that point on, pretty much Marvel Studios has been able to either get back or retain the rights to most of the other things. Now, among the ones that everyone seems to know, such as Captain America, Thor, Iron Man, Hulk, uh, Black Widow, Hawkeye. Um, Just the whole Avengers guy. Yeah, the right? whole <laughs> Avengers guy. What I would like to know, who do you think they could bring to Netflix that has had a bad outing in a movie? You know, from another studio or whatever. <sighs> From another studio or from whatever, man. You, you or just up. any kind any kind of situation. Any kind of situation. And it's just, I can only look at Marvel stuff. Only Marvel studio stuff. Well, We're not talking about Fox, Sony, or any of those other ones. Yeah, you know, well, anything that they could have. Um, I mean, know what they could do? They could bring Elektra. Because the Elektra movie was not good at all. It, it, it really wasn't. And I think that could give them another female voice, another female power. I know they're coming out with Jessica Jones, but you got to think about it. It's. I mean, it's the whole superhero realm is dominated by males. Yeah. You know, and um, they brought Agent Carter out. Agent Carter. I haven't watched any of the episodes, I so I can't really say what's going on. It. I just know the chick playing Agent Carter is hot. You know, mm-hmm. so we got that. You got that going for him. Um, you got the Jessica Jones series coming out again. Another person I don't know very much about, but we'll see how that goes. But it, it's kind of hard. I mean, a lecture could be something that they could do. Um, you know, I. I I would like to see them do something outside of the Avengers realm. You know, I would like to see a... I would really want to see another Ghost Rider movie. Someone that's actually good. Instead of <laughs> instead of Nicolas Cage. Yeah. Uh, what are we going to do? I mean, that, that dude is just... <laughs> he's overacts so damn much. And it's... Just, uh, it, you know, and... I mean, you could even look at the Blade franchise. Which I believe... I, I'm on, You're probably going to shoot me for this. They had the right guy to play Blade. Wesley Snipes was the right guy. He just had bad screenplays. He and the movies themselves were just not set up well. Blade Trinity just horrible. Blade Trinity was bad. Let's not forget that he doesn't pay taxes. Yes, but he's out now. Yeah, he is out. <laughs> he's out. So because he don't pay taxes, we're not worried about him paying taxes. Okay. Okay. We're just talking about that. I think if I really had a choice out of all those, I would like to see them reboot Blade because he is another character I really like. I really would. So, to piggy off that, so Elektra, uh, you know, she was Jaren for Garner in Daredevil, and then she had her mm-hmm. own movie, which was Elektra. And then Elektra is kind of like a little red ninja. Yes. You know, she, I mean, that's basically, like, if you had to <laughs> she encompass She reminds me of a G.I. Joe character. <laughs> yeah, really, that's what it is. She's, like, kind of like a G.I. Joe character. She's, like, a ninja. She, yeah. I think, might have, like, some connections to the spiritual world. I'm not really sure. I didn't really follow the Elektra storylines or comics, mainly because I don't find her an interesting character. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you why. This is why I don't want her in, in a Netflix series. It's gonna feel like Xena, the Warrior Princess, you know, where she's. <laughs> Wait a second. Have... Weren't you a fan of Xena? I was a fan. Yes. And but... why wouldn't you want to see another Xena? Because I was a child and naive and, you just, you just and going through puberty. <laughs> so some <laughs> some random 
fucking ironclad, escapeless woman running around beating the crap out of men so is appealing seeing, as seeing, a child. And seeing Lucy Lawless play that woman, and, and she, you know she's like six foot two. Oh yeah, <laughs> she's, she's a big huge. woman. Not but, to mention, and don't forget Gabrielle too. And she was she. Had I don't a, know. I never watched the show. Oh, All I knew was the big, tall, dark haired chick. Yeah. That's it. That's you're the you're, only you're person I knew. Anyways, but anyways, no. But even then, I just I don't find her to be compelling because I don't feel like she can maintain her own thing. I I don't know enough of that world, so I could be definitely wrong. You know, mm-hmm. if you think that she can. By all means, give me some reference material. I'll check it out. See if that might be something of interest. Because honestly, I don't know much about her. But, as you said, Blade, that is someone who can make a return. Because the thing is, (laughs) the thing about Blade, which, again, I'm going to reference an older series. Oh, please don't reference the Dan Spike series. Spike series? The Blade Spike series? No, 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 no. I forgot that even existed. So did the rest of the world. Thank God. But, yeah. No, not the Spike series. But... It had the right idea. Put him in a TV show. Mm-hmm. You know, it, putting him in a movie is all good and dandy. But the thing about when you put him, put something like Blade, you want to see him do more normal stuff. You know, the be- my favorite scenes from Blade are when he's just tearing apart vampires. You know, he's flipping around his little silver sword, and people, but you, you know, want to see him. Creatures are just flying more. off and just turning into dust. I get what you're saying. You want to see him do that more. Exactly. Instead of doing it just in the movie once or twice or whatever, and but then, see him do it on a regular basis right. in a TV series. Because the problem... Well, also what they could explore, too, is just his whole fight with that side of him as well. That's vampire, where it gives him the thirst. So they could build on that more. Yeah. And one of the things, too, is that you could really pull off is um, you steal, first of all, you steal from Arrow. Mm-hmm. Still, it works. And you don't start me out in the beginning and when he's trying to do it. Start me out when he's a little bit further into his career mm-hmm. and then just keep flashing back to the times where he's growing up dealing with the vampire stuff. Yeah. That would be appealing stuff. But here's the thing. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Angel, all were vampire. it was a vampire-focused show. I mean, it had vampires. That was kind of like the premise. And it, and it yeah. eventually sp- expanded to like bigger and better things. Like yeah. By the end of those seasons, I know you don't know anything about them. Just stick with no. me. But I'm at sticking the end of with you. Seasons, I'm just listening. I'm listening. At the end of those seasons, they weren't fighting vampires anymore. They're fighting demons and all yeah. these mythical creatures. Blade is someone you can do that with, where you start out and he's just fighting vampires and he's taking them out, and mm-hmm. then it leads to a big conclusion where he fights a bigger vampire or a, you know lots a of vampire vampires. boss. Exactly. And then he goes on to fight other things. Exactly. Then... It progresses and it makes it more appealing. It makes it more interesting. So that way you can kind of keep getting creative with them. And then while you're doing that, mm-hmm. give us flashbacks. Give us who this character is. And the thing is, you know what? What you're talking about is actually taking place on a couple of show on a show right now that I know you probably don't follow, but I actually watch it. It's Sleepy Hollow. Yeah, Sleepy, Sleepy Hollow, Hollow is doing doing that same type of thing. Supernatural so, also does it too. Yeah, see, I didn't watch Supernatural. Yeah. Sorry, lack of black people in it. Sorry, can't watch that show. There are but, black uh, people in it. They just tend to be the bad the guys. Two, yeah, who are the two stars of the show? They're white, but there's exactly. only two stars. There's literally four people in, as a Shut recurring up. character. You don't need to worry about it anymore because. Black woman is the star of Sleepy Hollow, and another black woman is a co-star. So, and then you have an, a Latino woman, and then you also have a black man who's also a co-star. So, let's not forget that I was supporting Blade. He's like one of like five yeah. black Marvel characters. Okay, okay? Yes. I thank you for supporting Blade. Yes. But yeah, I mean they're yeah, doing yeah. this, <laughs> <laughs> but they're doing the same thing with Sleepy Hollow because. You know, um, I don't know if you ever watched the show. And spoiler alert: if you haven't watched the first season, too bad, so sad. They basically were going for the apocalyptic thing. They were, the apocalypse was going to happen in the first season. Now that the apocalypse, now that they've taken care of the apocalypse, now they're on to something else. How do you go from apocalypse? What really can well because they, the, the thing is, the thing is, th- when it came to the apocalypse, it got to a point where demons were being thrust into our world right and so now that the now that they've stopped um you know the demons from being or now that they stopped the full-fledged apocalypse now that they they're fighting these demons inside our world that were left over after they stopped them so i can't remember the guy's name off the top of my head but uh, it, it's there so but yeah i i see them being able to do that with blade and I would love for them to actually reboot that series and put it on a Netflix or just put it on any television. But it has to be done well. 
Don't do like that the cheesy spike version that was just bad. It was bad. It was, it was just bad. bad. Please Thank don't you. get another rapper to try to play Blade. It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna work. Um so I mean there's there's a lot of people that you could think about trying to play that role too. So Yeah. I mean it, it it's a laundry list of guys that you could probably go through and uh, one person that could do it well. I can't even narrow one down right now. You know, exactly. I mean, well, the thing is, you had been, you wanted him to be Power Man, but he's he's too old. You wanted him to be Luke Cage, but he's too old. Michael Jai White would be perfect. He really would because he has a martial arts background. He's old enough, and I think he could be a good. I think he could do great with it. But he's a bad actor. It's not even. I mean, come on. So is Wesley Snipes. Yeah, but I, I mean, I get that, but that's what I'm saying is like, I couldn't, you can't have Wesley Snipes in the blade that I'm dreaming. Of. <laughs> you know, you just can't have it. You know, honestly, like, it would, like, it would be nice to have, um, God, I can't remember his name. Like, what's his name? The guy that did Apollo Creed and Rocky. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Carl Weathers. Carl Weathers. I mean, his acting ability, his physical prowess, and Michael Jai White and Wesley Snipes martial art ability all in a single black man. <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna that doesn't I know, exist. I know. But the advantage is you can teach him on the last two. Yeah. You know? So I mean, you know, who knows, maybe Michael Jai White can kill it. I mean, uh, you know, I, I think he's he's okay, but mm-hmm. I don't see him as being the type of guy that's gonna make me really own it. But again, I could be wrong, because you know what, Stephen Stephen Amell, who plays Green Arrow. He, you know, he pulls off all of the things and, mm-hmm. you know, I don't think he had that kind of background prior. Yeah, so. I, kn- I didn't know who Stephen Amell was until I watched Arrow, so. Exactly, exactly. So, really quick before we jump off of that, because I know we didn't even mention this. So, Terry Crews, he wanted to be Luke Cage, wasn't. Yeah. He does want to be Silver Surfer. Yes, he does want to be Silver Surfer. <laughs> we're not going to cover that too much no, just because we're just I don't gonna say, see that not working out. I don't see it working either. But it's, for him to even say that, it was kind of it was kind of crazy and kind of yeah. just off the wall. They said it, they just basically asked him, you know, since you're not able, he, they asked him, you know, who what character that you would like to play because he's a big superhero guy, big superhero fan. He said, you know, I would have loved to play Luke Cage, but my boy Mike Coulter got it. So if I had a choice, he said I would want to be Silver Surfer and. I don't see that happening. The only thing that he has in common with Silver Surfer is that he's muscular and he's bald. That's about it. Yeah, <laughs> and I think that's the thing is like if he wants to mocap him, I just don't. I don't think Terry Crews has that kind of like the thing I loved about Fantastic Force: Rise of the Silver Surfer, and this will be like one of like five things that I actually enjoyed of that movie. Silver Surfer, with all its mistakes, he was still portrayed very well. No, I love the voice of Silver Surfer. Love it. Fishburne. Yeah, I mean, the voice was perfect. Yeah. And I so, mean, I mean, you're also talking about Jessica Alba in another skin tight suit. So yeah, yeah, that was the only that was like the only good thing for me in the movie. That was like the other like it's like one of four, one yeah. of five. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So bigger news um, that we're going to be covering here. Yeah, the probably the biggest news. Biggest of news the of week. the week. Um, probably of the month, really. Let's be honest. So, yeah. as we stated, Spider Man is owned by Sony. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, when uh, Marvel was a little poor <laughs> and declaring bankruptcy, they were like, "Hey, hey we need some money." Hey, so, Sony, do you, you want to buy? Do you want to buy Spider Man? You want to buy a Spider Man? <laughs> Please, can I have some more? Uh, that that's just a bad Oliver Twist, man. So, oh, well, I'm Asian. <laughs> you try, you try. <laughs> whatever. You try, anyway, man. so yeah, so they sold the rights to Spider Man to Sony. Sony mm-hmm. made him three movies, killed it. Made another two movies, killed <laughs> it. Kind of. Wait a second. The first three movies. First two you, killed it. You, 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 talk, you, you talk about Tobey Maguire, Probability wise, right? profitability wise, they killed it. <laughs> profitability wise, those suckers are still profitable. Okay, I'm, then if you're talking about profit wise, all five of them. Man. No, the, the other, the last two didn't do as well as they had wanted to. Anyways, but Blind the point of the matter is, the Spider-Man <laughs> franchise is a lot of money. They, it yeah. has made quite a bit of money. It has made more money than a lot of the Marvel movies. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it's definitely getting up there. So the thing with uh, you know the Spider-Man thing is that big news. Uh, Sony's been kind of hurting for cash. They have to yeah. hack. Korea hates them. You know, people aren't seeing their movies, things like that. Yeah. So weren't they uh, part of the? Didn't they have their card in on the Exodus movie with Gods and Kings? Mm, didn't they throw their realm into that or threw their hat into that ring? I thought that was Universal. 
Anyway, I don't continue. Know. Anyway, we're, so we're anyway, so getting to our story, Spider Man is officially going to be a part of Marvel Movie Madness. He is going to be part of the MCU. Yeah, yes. see, I said that. Yeah. See, the term that you told me about. Yeah, because yeah, you didn't you know what it was. No, That's the Marvel Cinematic right. Universe. Universe people. That's put the, a dash, yeah, write that see. down. That will be tested for, uh, and it will be multiple choice. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, so he's part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So, yes. one of Marvel's biggest stars, you know, because uh, let's be honest, Marvel had to make stars when they started doing these movies because uh-huh. a lot of their heroes that were part of the Avengers were not popular until the Avengers came out. And now they have someone who's already popular going into it. Yeah. So now Spider-Man could essentially be part of the Marvel Universe. He could team up with Iron Man. He can bestie up with, uh, Captain with America. So, you know, there's definitely some really interesting things. Now, one of my favorite things um, that... Uh, <laughs> There's a great moment that was in a comic. And I don't remember what it was or what was happening, but Hulk um, and Spider Man and the Avengers are all on the bridge. And um, Raja, stop that. My dog, stop. We don't have a third cast member yet. <laughs> it's just my dog. Um, so <laughs> he. Uh, they're all on the bridge and they're saving it. They save something. Um, and there's aliens there. And so, blah, blah, blah. So at the end, Spider Man's like, okay, well, now we're like in the middle of nowhere because they left the bridge and fought these aliens. And now Spider Man's like, oh, well, I have to get back to New York. Who wants to give me a ride? And he looks over to Iron Man and Iron Man's like, bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> and all the other Avengers kind of just disappear. And I think Black Widow or someone just kind of like, nudges hulk and he's like hey you want to give uh you want to give spider-man a a ride back to new york <laughs> by ride he's like gonna fucking hop all yeah, the way he's over gonna there. jump 25 so miles what's ironic is like <laughs> spider-man and all his quips he's like so you want me to like web up like this like yoda pack so we can kind of like <laughs> do like this yoda thing and like the very next panel in the comic Shows Hulk grab him by the arm, like fiercely. He's like, or abusive boyfriend. <laughs> and he just takes off with him all the way to New York. And it was just really funny. And like, just having that moment in the movies would just be great. Just like those quips, those comic relief. Because let's be honest, I I think I think Robbie Downey Jr. is funny, but he's a different type of. He's quip. a different. He's a different type of funny. He is yeah. a more adult type of quip you know it, he's it, more of an asshole he's he, a funny he's ass he's a cocky he's a cocky funny is what he yeah is. he's kind of a funny cocky ass where is spider-man's kind of like the kind of like the kid you roll your eyes at but you still can't help but laugh kind <laughs> no, of deal i mean uh spider-man is like the class clown when it comes to his a little bit to, to his when stuff. he's spider-man when he's spider-man when he's spider when, when he's, he's peter you know, parker he's, he's parker, tripping no, he's, over his own ass yeah peter parker can uh, walk up a flight of stairs yeah but Still. So, um, so yeah. So, how do you feel about that? How do you feel that Spider Man is now even part of the Marvel universe? Uh, I'm glad that they're bridging them together because I would love to see the entire Marvel, the entire Marvel book come together into one just huge conglomerate, be in one area. That way, you won't have the fighting and the 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 movies not taking place in the same world. You can connect them. By, by getting them all owned by the same company. You know, you can connect. And the thing is, these people all to connect together in some way, shape, or form. They do. They all have. They all come together. Fantastic Four works with, you know, Spider-Man and all that. They all work together, you know. So I would love to see it happen. I'm excited to see that they started with Spider-Man. Hopefully they can do the same with the X-Men franchise or the Wolverine franchise or whatever. You know, they're already bringing some mutants in into Age of Ultron. We've seen that. You know, we've already seen that they're bringing in some mutants, so we will see what's going on there. But it's I'm excited for it. I'm not happy that they got rid of Andrew Garfield because I believe that he was, you know, a great Spider-Man. But I can understand why they let him go. I said, hey, look, we need to go with a young route. We need to get a little bit younger on it. So, OK, that's fine. I'm, I'm cool with that. You know, so we will see what happens. I'm looking forward to him being in the Marvel Universe because it just bridges it so much better now. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, you know, I'm, I am really interested. I think the Spider-Man thing is going to be really interesting. 
Um, so we're, we're definitely going to see how that has to turn out. But it, it's exciting because, again, I like Spider-Man. He's a good character. Yeah. Um, so I propose a question to you. So because of this, mm-hmm. you know, they've had they've kind of changed their slate. Yeah. And because of this, they have pushed the Black Panther movie from 2016 to 2017 mm-hmm. to make room essentially for more Spider-Man stuff. Yeah. How does that make you feel? I'm not that worried about it. No. The thing is, Black Panther is not a huge, huge character by any sorts. But he's black. Yeah, he's black. But you know what? Black superheroes are here and there. They come and go. And when they're around, they're around. When they're not, they're not. So it's not that big of a deal to me. Kind of like black dads. (laughs) (laughs) If he's talking a little funny next week, you guys will know why. Because of that joke right there. (laughs) You're all witnesses. (laughs) Um, So yeah, so that pretty much ends it for the Marvel Madness. There's probably some little stories here and there that we haven't Discuss. We'll probably kind of hop into those in a minute here. But for the main Marvel Cinematic Universe, that kind of covers the gamut of them. Mm-hmm. Now, real quick, sure. to DC News. This is going to be a comic Ooh, film DC, kind hey. of podcast. How dare you? <laughs> if he's talking kind of funny, you'll know why. Yeah, yeah I said it. Yeah, I'd like to see you try. I'll just get a sledgehammer and beat you <laughs> over the head. <laughs> it's like a fucking Terminator. I'll have to get like this giant compressor <laughs> to sit on you. <laughs> so we've been talking a lot about Suicide Squad. Suicide mm-hmm. Squad is probably the next movie uh, in the works after Batman after v Superman. Batman. Yeah. So it's kind of a big deal, especially considering how much is attached to it. You know how much. Well, the name of the is... people that are attached to it right now is just huge. yeah. So, uh, one of the big things is Tom Hardy did drop out. He's no longer going to be the squad's field commander, Rick Flagg, who's pretty prominent in the comics. Um, and now he's going to be probably jumping into, uh, you know, he's going to be doing his own thing. So, they're still needing to fill that role. They are set to film in April. Yeah, they're so, set to start filming in April. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I mean, they're working kind of hard to try to get somebody in there, you know. So, hopefully they can find somebody that's good. Now, the rumors are... Now, what are the rumors? Who's the guy that they're thinking about in the rumors for Rick Flagg? Uh, they're talking about Joel Kinnaman. And he was RoboCop in the remake, right? He was RoboCop, oh, yes. Okay. So, right. um, how do you feel about that? What do you think? <sighs> Based on that guy's body of work, you know, I mean, I can't really, I can't really say anything about it. I really can't. I don't know the guy. I mean, I saw the RoboCop movie and I wasn't overly impressed with it, but... It is what it was, you know. Um, what about? Um, I don't know much about the Rick Flag character. I'm I'm a little disappointed not to see Tom Hardy in it because I loved him as Bane. I really did. You know, I don't give a damn what anybody says. If <laughs> if Heath Ledger can get himself an Oscar nomination or get an Oscar win for his play as the Joker, damn it, Tom Hardy should have been in some consideration just for being able to convey strength, emotion, pain, and just power with his eyes because you could not see his mouth in that entire freaking movie okay you know when he gave that speech at the black gate prison i said that you know that was a great freaking speech i don't give a damn what anybody i I love that speech because he was only talking with his eyes so you know um like i said i'm a little disappointed to see him drop out so this guy that they're considering it mm, i don't know i I just don't know because i don't i don't know the guy's body of work do you think that uh, you know when when Tom Hardy was like, "Hey, I can't be Rick Flag." Do you think Will Smith was like, "Do you accept this man's resignation?" <laughs> he probably was goofy ass like that. Do you accept this man's resignation? Do you accept this man's resignation? In his lies and his deceitful ways. <laughs> Um, he probably did because he is a dick like that sometimes. Yeah. He's silly like that. Yeah, so. so, I don't know. It made me think of that moment. <laughs> uh, Joel, I think Joel Kinnon, I liked him in RoboCop. I liked the movie. Uh, I haven't watched The Killing. I heard that's a pretty good show. Yeah, I haven't watched it either. It's because you, really, you don't like Netflix because you know, yeah. you're still living in 95. Probably have a beeper. <sighs> I'm living in 2005, thank you. Probably still have a beeper. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, no, not anymore. <laughs> 
So yeah, I mean, I, I'm really, uh, I'm excited for that movie. I really hope it turns out well. Joel Kinnaman, I think, is good. Let's be honest, the, Rick Flagg's probably the character that dies in the movie. It's called Suicide Squad for a reason. <laughs> Somebody's gonna die. So just, just, just. Well, we damn sure know it's not gonna be Deadshot or Harley Quinn because she's setting up to be them. with the Joker. Yeah, they need. You know, them. so those people will stay. Yeah. So. Um, you had a bit of topic news. Yes, I did have a bit of topic news. For all my sneakerheads out there, Nike is finally putting out an app for your phone. They are finally doing it. Yes, people, we will have access to Nike on our phones now. Because currently, Nike does not have an app where we can actually go on a mobile app and actually look at everything and see anything or even buy. They don't have it. You have to go directly to the website. Nike is now actually going to put an app on your phone where you can actually buy, get information about releases. You know, you'll be able to, they'll tell you, they'll send you notifications, say, hey, look, this shoe is releasing today at such and such a time. You want to buy it. So I'm looking forward to it. I love it because I'm a sneakerhead. And you had a question. What is your question? I, I'm not really sure I understand the full relevancy of an app. Well, you got to think about it. Best Buy, all your other large conglomerate stores, Amazon, you can go right online and buy. You can go right on a phone app and buy. Best Buy, you can do it. Um, you can do it with Walmart. You can do it with Target. You can do it with all these other apps. You can do it with this. You can't do it with the number one brand for a sportswear and shoes, period. You can't do it with them because it doesn't exist. Yeah, but I mean... Nor can you get the information. See, you don't live in a sneakerhead world. You don't live in that realm. So you don't know what I'm talking about in this. The only way that we can get information about releases of these shoes is to have to physically go online and check additional websites. You know, check third-party websites saying that this shoe is dropping this day and it's supposedly supposed to be this much. And that, that may not even be the actual date that it drops, <laughs> Because they're working off of rumors. They're working as a third party. Right. Now you have complete access to those release dates, to the website, to the actual purchasing power. You never, you didn't, didn't have that before unless you were directly online. So I, I guess the thing I, because I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, I can see, you know, Brand Target, with Best Buy. But the thing about them is that, like, they have things that, like, they have a variety of things. Like, mm -hmm. I guess they just don't see a need for this, like, oh, I need new shoes. Get the app out, and I'll do it while I'm on the bus or something. Like I said, you don't live in the sneakerhead world. You don't. Because a shoe releases, right? It sells out in a matter of five minutes. Jesus. Yeah. Depending on the popularity of the shoe, it can sell out in a matter of five minutes. And if you don't have access to a computer at that time when that shoe releases, you're not going to get it. <laughs> and majority of the shoes you can't really buy at a store. A lot of these shoes that they release, you can't buy at a store because they don't sell them there. They only sell them on their website. So, again, this is for my sneakerheads. This is for my shoe people. These are for my people that love my love kicks, love shoes. They live and breathe by the release dates. Hell, I'm in a group on Facebook for it, okay? I want to start my own blog for it. Plug it, plug it. <laughs> Love for the shoe game. You know, if you want to get down with it, hit me up. I'm the only J Battle that you're going to come into contact on Facebook. So find me. I can sign you up for Love for the Shoe Game, all right? So, you know, we talk about shoes. We sit there and, we sit there and converse about shoes. This app is revolutionary for people like myself. Does, for the rest of the for the rest of the sneakerhead world, does other shoe companies not have an app? No, does they do not. Reebok, Adidas, all those guys, they don't have one. Adidas is actually owned by Reebok. Oh, is it really? Or I'm sorry, Adidas owns Reebok. I didn't know that. Yeah, Adidas owns Reebok. They bought Reebok maybe about seven, eight years ago to try to broaden their brand over here for the basketball realm. But Reebok has just basically phased itself out of the basketball realm. So they only really have fitness and training shoes now. So look for them for their number one, their number two, or their two top athletes right now are John Jones and Ronda Rousey. So if you're a fan of UFC, that's what they'll be rocking when they come to the ring is they'll be rocking Reebok. And in fact, if you watch the Cormier fight with John Jones, he came in the air wearing Reebok trunks. So, so 
Asics, you know. Um, None of those other companies that you're thinking nobody, about. Nobody, nobody. Under nobody. Armour, nobody. Nobody. That's None of them have. Thing. None of them have that. None of them have online access or mobile access. The only way you can get mobile access is to go directly to their websites. None of these other places have it. That's interesting. So, I mean, you got to think about it too. It's the only other company I could tell you that actually has that is going to be East Bay. And East Bay, if you guys don't know who East Bay is, again, you're not a sneakerhead. But <laughs> East Bay is the warehouse for your Foot Locker, your Champs, your Foot Action, your Kenny Shoes. They're their warehouse. Hmm. East Bay is the only company I know of that actually has an actual mobile app where you can actually go on there and buy, purchase product and see their product. Well, but it's not their they don't product. Give you, or it's their product because they bought it. But, but they don't give you release time. They won't alert you at what time a shoe is releasing. You just have to know. Yeah. 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 Hell, I mean, Jordans. Um, there's Jordans that are dropping all this weekend. Or shoes, period, dropping all this weekend. They'll sell out in a matter of 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because of just the exclusivity of them. And, you know, that's how they sell. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Okay, well, um, I guess that's a big deal. Yes, it is a big deal. The thing is, the only problem I see with it, it's kind of a, an elongated process to actually get the damn app. Really? How so? Well, you have to have a link. Mm-hmm. Once you go to the link, you have to get on a wait list. Once you get on the wait list, once your name comes up on the wait list, Nike is going to email you a code. Once you get that code, you can actually get the app. And currently, right now, they only have available for iPhone because Nike has a partnership with Apple. I don't know right. if you knew that. I knew about that. Yeah, they have a partnership with Apple. So right now, it's only currently available on the iPhones. And Android is on its way. Yeah, eventually, because they have, they're going to eventually. I mean, oh, yeah. there's no such thing as app exclusivity so much because it's just like the market is so huge. Yeah. You can't. But they started with Apple, of course, because of. Yeah. yeah. It just that tends to be the way of the way of the beast, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, if you're a huge sneakerhead, uh, I believe it's going to be called Sneaker. S-N-K-R. It's called K R. It's called Nike S N K R S sneakers. Yeah. Sneakers. So, you know, if you're someone that wants your J's all the time and <laughs> wants your J's, you price. want your LeBron's, you want your KD's, also, you, you want can your go, phone posits. You can go to J or any <laughs> J advice um, and he'll definitely be assisting you. So, um, that kind of, ra- oh, well, I forgot we could talk about the Deadpool thing. Uh, so, Deadpool. Uh, kind of a big thing coming out here. Yeah. It, it's uh, kind of it's a big deal because yeah. no one was expecting this to actually come out. I yeah. honestly wasn't expecting it. I didn't think it was gonna to do that. But um, but they've been releasing some prototypes of the mm-hmm. mask and just some theories and stuff like that. And it looks pretty true to the comics. Mm-hmm. Um, go to Ryan Reynolds' Twitter. He um, he has. Some s- pictures of some old ma- some new masks or old masks. I don't know if they are new or old, but um, they're supposed to be in it. Some teasers of his mask and his gloves, and we will we will see. I'm actually uh, looking forward to Deadpool. Ryan Reynolds deserves a win. Yeah, I mean, I like. Him. I, I think he got a bad rap for Green Lantern. I enjoyed the Green Lantern movie. I think it was just ill timed and it was a bad screenplay. You know, but. Hey, what can you do? <laughs> you know, hopefully he can get himself back on the boat with Deadpool because I liked him as Wade was. I really did. I liked him as Wade it's when he was minutes. in. Huh? It's five minutes. What's five minutes? He had like five minutes. Oh, in that movie? Play, yeah. Yeah. Well, I liked him in. Oh, I hate, hate to say it, but Origins. <laughs> I liked him in it. You know, the little two, three minutes he had, he was cool. Yeah. And then they just killed the whole character for me by the end of the movie. But. <laughs> I'm not going to go on my soapbox because, you know, I can do that. So we will. I'm looking forward to seeing Ryan Reynolds. Hopefully he gets a win with this. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I guess we'll see. I, I kind of feel like Fox is just kind of scrambling to try to get franchises out the door and try to make something <laughs> of it. Fox is hemorrhaging money right now because their television station is not doing too well. So. No, that's right. Really well. Um... <laughs> So, talk real quickly about some old school stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Beverly Hills Cop. Mm-hmm. What do you know what of it? it? 
Do well, I knew there was there there was supposed to be a TV series coming out for Beverly Hills Cop. Mm-hmm. Um, that's about it. You know, I knew that it was supposed to be happening because, of course, the third movie took place so long ago, and it was just really bad. <laughs> I didn't think it was that bad. It was bad. <laughs> it had its moments. Aquel, 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 Surge, Surge. Sounds like a, sounds sounds like like a, a detergent. detergent. <laughs> um. So it was supposed to be a TV show. They've mm-hmm. kind of revamped it. Now they're talking 2016 in March. Mm-hmm. Beverly Hills Cop Four. They're actually going to make a movie out of it now. That's what they're saying. Yes, you okay. know. And okay. Eddie Murphy's talked about how just things were not working right for the TV show, which is mm-hmm. why they eventually just decided to go movie again. So okay. it's probably going to still be this premise, same premise, because no, where know, it's his son again. Where it's his son, just because he's an older guy, and you don't the thing. Just like Indiana Jones, just like Lethal Weapon 4, people mm-hmm. don't want to see their action heroes be old. No. So you need something to kind of anchor it and give it some, give it some feel. So having like a younger guy, just like I was saying about when we were talking about the Indiana Jones thing, uh-huh. having a younger guy there to make fun of doing what the audience wants you to do <laughs> is a nice way of kind of like soothing that over. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Are they still talking about Brandon T. Jackson playing his son? I'm not quite sure. You know, we'll we'll see how it goes out. As long as it's not Jaden Smith, we're okay. I'm okay. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, we 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 can cross our fingers. I mean, let's be honest. That boy might turn out to be the your best actor in the world. Okay, I'm just I'm just saying. Everybody has their moments. Or he could just turn out to be the weirdest freak out there. Could do that too. Yeah. The boy's head looked like he got turds on top of his head, man. <laughs> okay. He walk around wearing he walk around wearing leggings and dresses. Okay. Uh, yeah, I remember when he showed up as like a white Batman and yeah. he was like oh, one of the Kardashians or something. Oh my god, yeah, boys, that, boys, weird. That boy's weird, weird, man. Hey, you know what, Will and Jada, man. <laughs> I He's give y'all all the box. credit. I give y'all all the credit in the world, but man, get some get some control over them two little them two kids, man, because something is not right with them. Something wrong. <laughs> Something's wrong. The, the girl walking around looking like a popcorn head. The boy walking around with turds on top of his head. I mean, come on, get some control. Just, just cut it off and they sleep or something. <laughs> okay? No, because then, they'll, then they really will be accused of child abuse, and then, then you know, then they'll be taken away by child services. Shit. But let's be honest here. Let's let's be real for a minute. Jane and. Um, What's the girl's, what was the girl's name? Willow. Willow. If Janie and Willow really would have taken my child services, literally within five minutes, those kids would be emancipated. Yeah. Okay, let's be honest, because those kids are richer than anybody. Yeah, they had nothing on Macaulay Culkin when he made Home, on, Home Alone movies. Yeah. yeah. Those so, kids have money to burn. Yeah. So, yeah. Let's just, let's just be for real for a minute. So, uh, speaking of nostalgia, something uh-huh. that I recently watched, I highly recommend that you do this. <laughs> I watched Sandlot. Yes. Sandlot. Man, did that take me back. (laughs) Man, that took me back. That was just like a movie where I'm just like, you watch it, and there's these kids, and it's funny, like, there are things I notice now as an adult that I would never notice as a kid. (laughs) Like Like what? Like the kids from Boston. Which oh, kid? The Smalls. He's like oh, a Bo- he's like an East Coast Boston kid. Like you don't you don't pick that up initially, but he's from the East Coast because of how he says things. Now it could just be the actor. I think that might have been the actor. But it makes it sells because he just moved in. Yeah. He doesn't have a lot of friends. He's not kind of familiar with everything. You know, with the whole baseball thing, that could make sense if he's from like a you know an East Coast place. Maybe they're you know it's a little bit different because they have different weather. You know, so he's probably not playing baseball all that often like you would be in like Cali or you know Arizona. Um, but he's all like, "You guys don't understand. We gotta get my ball." <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, like and he says that, and it's just like really funny because I'm like, I think that's the actor, man. I, I know. Can't, I can't say that's the kid. I can't say he's from Boston. Well, yeah, I know, but I mean, you got a you got a dad like Dennis Leary. <laughs> You know, so you got to assume there might be some East Coast roots. That's his stepdad. Whatever. Still, <laughs> you got to meet him somewhere. Probably met him on the East Coast. <laughs> you know, Chicago, one of those places. I don't know. I'm just saying. I just love the way he said ball. Gotta find my ball. Well, it, it would make sense that he's from the East Coast. I mean, hell, Babe Ruth did play on the East Coast. Babe yeah, Ruth was a Yankee, Yankee and a Red Sox. And that's how his stepdad got it was his yeah. stepdad got it from getting a signature from Babe, Babe Ruth. Ruth so. Yeah. Um, 
I could not stop laughing, you know, because James Earl Jones walks in, and man, it is like your grandpappy came into the room, and you just just like sat back and like, oh man, granddaddy gonna tell another story. Like, <laughs> like just, everybody get sit, get your spots. Granddaddy gonna tell a story. It's just so nostalgic. Where he's all like, who, who all there? Who's making all that, that racket? That? You're the ones making all that ragged. Yeah, you can do the James Earl Jones better. I can't go Why don't low you just enough. Just knock on the door. I would have gotten it for you. <laughs> See, I told you. I told you. We got it back. Though. We, we got, got the ball back. back. We got the ball back. Um, yeah, it was just it, it was a good movie. I highly recommend anyone just checking that movie out again. It's so good. Music is so good. That all those music songs. Like I'm just like, wow, these are really good songs. Um, <laughs> Real interesting stuff. There's a lot of things that I did not notice. A lot of those actors are kind of still doing stuff. Like, not a lot of them are doing anything anymore either. No, they aren't. The only I know, uh, Brandon Adams, who played the Nunez, the pitcher, I think he's really the only one that still really acts. No, the Smalls kid, he does stuff. Smalls does? Smalls, stuff. yeah, but the. What's funny is the, 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 the Mexican kid. Uh, Benny? He's Benny. A, he's a firefighter. He's an actual firefighter? He is an actual firefighter. Oh, snap. So good for him. I didn't yeah, know that. He is an actual firefighter. He has nothing to do with the movie. That was his only movie he ever did. No, it wasn't. Yeah. He Mighty yeah. Ducks. Oh, that was Benny and him. I yeah. forgot about that. But he, he was in Mighty actually, Ducks. And he was that in, might have been a different kid. No, that was Mighty Ducks. Yeah, but I he looked left up his act, Andy yeah. Duck the other day. Yeah, he, uh, but he left acting after that and... He, I mean, good for he's him. He's a firefighter. I mean, but I just was like, man, he was a good actor. And it was just like, that era... <laughs> Like that was probably one of the things too with the '90s. Yeah, I'm getting on a rant again. <laughs> one of the things about the, the '90s, 90s. With the '90s. I'm just saying the '90s had this thing about putting kids in sports movies. It was a kids sports movie, man. It, it was, was like that. There was like an era. era that, yeah, like, it was like an uh, era. Like, like it was. Like, I guess some executives like kept watching Little League enough times, and they were mm-hmm. just like, "Why don't we put these guys in real world sports?" Oh yeah, they had. You know, I mean, you had your. Uh, you had your Mighty Ducks. Little Giants. You had the Little Giants. Uh, you had um, Rookie of the Year. Rookie of the Year. Uh, you had Little Big League. Little Big League, yeah. There you go. <laughs> I mean, you had them all. No, no, no. Um, there's a basketball one, isn't there? I feel like there's what? a basketball one in there. Basketball kid movies? Yeah. Um, like not in the movies. 90s. They went, to, they went to like the 2000s with those. Yeah, because there was that little Bow Wow one. Like, like, yeah, like, that was like Mike, and then you had Rebound, and you had... Uh, Air Bud. Air Bud. That's, that, that's not... Oh, it's still God. kids in sports just uh, with dogs. I knew you were going to say Air Bud. I just didn't want to bring it up, man. That was another thing, too. Like That was like kind of like a revival in the oh 90s. My God. It was animal movies. Beethoven. Animal movies. And Beethoven. Air Milo Bud. Milo and Otis. Milo, Milo and Otis. Otis. Uh, Homeward Bound. Yeah, Homeward Bound, yeah. Homeward Bound. Far uh, from, no, Far From Home was uh, the Hatchet movie, but that was based off of a book. I don't know. Hatchet? Been, yeah, I well, didn't know it was batch, uh, based off of Hatchet. Yeah, you I didn't read know Hatchet. Far From Home, The Adventures of Yellow Dog was based off of Hatchet. Did I did not. Yeah. I just because the name doesn't scream Hatchet. It's just no, like it doesn't. Far I mean, From Home, The Adventures, Adventures of, of Yellow, Yellow Dog. Dog. <laughs> it's just kind of a really weird name. Maybe if I actually remember the book, it might have stood out more in my head. So I don't know. Maybe maybe that's that's true. But yeah, um, God, what else? Like there's so I mean there is I, I, I stand corrected. There are some iconic movies in the nineties. Mm-hmm. Um. I just don't feel that they stand up in comparison to some of the more iconic movies in the 80s. Well, like, we, we were talking about this earlier, and I, I was telling you, in the 90s, it was more about shock and awe. It was more about the thrills. And the 80s, And the it weird was, stuff. Don't yeah, the weird, the stuff. weird stuff. Yeah, <laughs> the weird it's, stuff. And the weirder, the better sometimes. But, and then in the 80s, it was a much calmer pace. It was more feel-good. It was more just, okay, you know... Some bad stuff may happen, but it's gonna work out in the end. It's you know? all good. It's all good. It's, it's all good. It's all good. It's it's a little airborne. It's, it's, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> you know, but that's exactly how the '80s were. I mean, hell, look at the weekend at Bernie's movies. Free Willy. That's the other one. Oh god, I knew there was a big one. I was forgetting. <laughs> Free Willy. That's what it was. Free Willy. I can't even front because if my sister listens to this one, please listen to this because I'm gonna give you a lot of credit. Yes, my sister would tell you I was a huge Free Willy fan. I used to sing really? the damn Michael Jackson song all the damn time. Man. I didn't remember how it went. Oh my god, my sister would make so much fun of me, man. I actually watched both of them, and the third one, I, it was hard for me to watch the third one. The third one was a little weird. It was like yeah. hardcore, like nature preachy yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah, the third one was it wasn't needed whatsoever. I was a never-ending story too. Yeah, that was that was eighties. 
Was that an 80s movie? And Never Ending Story is an 80s movie. Oh, snap. Because it came out during that Jim Henson era where you had the Labyrinth, Dark Crystal. Was Labyrinth, wait, Labyrinth was an 80s oh, movie? Oh, Labyrinth is an 80s movie. I thought movie. it was like early 90s. No, Labyrinth is an 80s movie as well as the Dark Crystal. Well, Dark Crystal, that's a disturbing movie. <laughs> I recommend two things to someone if they ever decide to watch the Dark Crystal. Number one. Do not watch it high. Do not. Well, yeah. Okay, I, got, I got three <laughs> things to mention now. Drugs. Please don't, do not don't watch, watch that. Anytime you're inebriated, say drunk, high, no. any of those things. Do not do you that. You have to watch that movie with a clear head. And you should probably watch that with someone. <laughs> Just to, to protect yourself and to protect those around you. Okay? And whatever you do, do not watch it at night. Because you don't want that to be the most precious thing in your brain when you go to bed. Okay? You don't want that, okay? Because oh some scary shit's gonna occur, okay? <laughs> I'm saying, like, I remember Disney Channel would do this thing when I was a kid where they'd show a movie every night. And it was yeah. always at, like, 7 or 8 o'clock or something. Yeah. And it was a different movie every time. Yeah. Um, sometimes it would be, like, one of their movies. Sometimes it would be, like, an old 90s movie. Uh-huh. Um, and occasionally they'd bring in some really weird fucking movies. Yeah. One of those weird ass movies. Or you know what? Maybe it wasn't Disney. Maybe that was like on TNT. No, that was on T it was more that, that was a little too dark for Disney, so it came on like your 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 local affiliates movie. Stations. It could have been it, okay, it came on in that era where yeah. you could always find those movies. You could have uh-huh. found a movie either on TNT, USA, um, USA F- was a big one for whatever FX was before it was FX. It's just Fox. <laughs> no, it was called something else. I know it. It was called something else. Shut up. I knew it was. Um, <laughs> Spike wasn't around then. Anyway, so you you saw these movies and Dark Crystal came on. It was like <laughs> nine o'clock, and I was like, you were freaked out. I was like you? eleven, I think eleven or ten, ten or eleven. So nine o'clock <laughs> was it pushing late for me? But at that point, you found all that you're going to find as far as full entertainment to really embrace the brain. Anything outside of that, you're really just having ambient noise on. You're just, you got, you know, Nick at Night on or something. You know, just got something in the background to listen to while you're, you know, screwing around and doing something else. This show, this movie was in my brain when I went to bed. And I'll tell you what, you know what? I didn't want to sleep for like a week. Okay? I tell Some you. Some weird ass creatures crawling around okay. with crystals and doing weird stuff. Now, I've given you the best analogy of both of the movies, Labyrinth and The Dark Crystal. Both of them are Jim Hansen products. Mm-hmm. Okay? It's so is so is Fraggle Rock. I don't know if you ever knew what Fraggle Rock Why was. But so Fraggle Rock was a little cartoon. It was a puppet show as well. Um, it was uh, about these like rat looking things called fraggles oh, yeah. Yeah, that lived that. in the wall and this guy's you know in the wall of this guy's house and yeah. you know, they were like rats that's what they were they were rats, rats or mice or whatever my but, brain interpreted them as just Muppets yeah they're, they're I just, just thought Muppets. they were other episodes of Muppets yeah they yeah because the thing is you didn't know that they were like rats or something until they walked out into the real world into the guy's shop and the dog started chasing them and the guy was like hey what? you know that you didn't know they were that Mm-hmm. So that's what Fraggles were, but Labyrinth is Muppets. <laughs> it's Muppets on crack, okay. The Dark Crystal is Muppets on acid. That is the best way to depict those, okay. Mm-hmm. And that's why I tell you, don't watch it high. <laughs> Don't watch it at night. You say don't watch it at night. I and still don't find watch that it alone. <laughs> don't watch it alone. Hilarious. Don't watch but it alone. But that was during that Jim Henson era where everything was Muppets, Muppets, Puppets, and stuff like that. So it's some good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. But yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. But that was '80s because you got to think about it. David Bowie was a star of Labyrinth, and you could only wear pants that tight if you were a man. In the 80s. I feel like David Bowie would still wear pants like that today. Yeah, he still does, and it it doesn't work. It didn't work then. No. It didn't work then. No, because you don't... Uh, uh, no, Anyways. not going to go there. So moving on from the Bowie bulge, we're going uh-huh. to... Yeah, you went there. Yeah. Um, again, uh, that'll be the end of our show tonight. Thank you again for listening. Once again, feel free to check this out on uh, YouTube. We should be getting this on iTunes. Uh, I got the approval and everything to get this stuff going Ooh, on iTunes. iTunes. So uh, get this, get everything started. I will be putting that in the description below uh, in the YouTube, and then you should just find it on iTunes as well. We are now on SoundCloud. 
Yes. So check that out, Nerdy Wise Guy uh, or Nerd Wisdom. If you want you, either one of those, you should be able to locate just fine. Uh, mm-hmm. Feel free to like, subscribe, share this with your friends. Get this out into the world. Spread the wisdom and spread you know the joy. Uh, again, thank you for nerding out with us. Have a good one. <laughs>